duck's eggs. South Africa is an incredible winemaking region and falls under the top 10 biggest wine producing countries in the world. They make an incredible diverse style of wines and if you had to take a deeper look into how the wines are made specifically, you'll see how many aspects play a role in how this wine is made and then really come to appreciate the wines for what they are. It's important to note that if we do speak about South African wines, we are specifically referring to the Western Cape, since 95% of the country's wines is produced in this province alone. South Africa is considered a New World wine region, despite the fact that we've been making wines here since 1659, making us one of the oldest wine regions. But the fact that we are considered a New World wine region has more to do with our growing conditions than the amount of time we've been making wine. But if you want more on that, take a look at my video where I compare New World and Old World wine regions. The South African wine industry was started by a Dutch settler known as Jan van Riebeek, who first planted wines here in the 17th century. And although he was the first to plant vines and make wine, it was actually his successor, Simon van der Stel, who truly started the wine industry's reputation. In fact, the wine estate that Timon van der Staal started in Constantia is still standing today and is known for their incredible quality wines. And although each of the regions in South Africa make their own style of wine with many different influences, in general there is a big European influence in how we make our wines. South African winemakers tend to lean a lot towards French styles of winemaking, especially those of Bordeaux. But unlike France, there aren't as many strict rules in South Africa regarding how we can make our wines. So South Africa therefore has a lot of wiggle room, which allows for a lot of different techniques and innovation, and allows winemakers to try new things like aging the wine in concrete vessels or trying different types of oak for instance. So before diving into the specifics of the wine regions, it's important to know that when you look at South African wines as a whole, there are three main external features that play a huge role in how the wines develop. So firstly, the Western Cape sits at the tip of Africa, where the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean meet. This is the only winemaking region in the world where there's two different types of ocean influences. While it is extremely important to have warm growing conditions for the grapes to ripen correctly, it's equally as important to have cooler conditions to create balance in the grapes. So that makes the conditions in the Western Cape ideal because we have really long warm summer days which means the grapes reach optimal ripeness, there's a lot of sugar and concentration. But then on the opposite end, these two ocean influences ensure that there's a lot of acidity and freshness in all of the wines. Not only this, but the Western Cape experiences a really strong southeasterly wind known as the Cape Doctor which allows a lot of producers in South Africa to create sustainable, organic and biodynamic wines, since these strong winds prevent many, many pests and diseases from impacting the vines. The second thing is the great diversity of soil and plants in South Africa. It is often something that's overlooked, but it's such an important feature in the quality and especially the flavors of the wines that we make in the Western Cape. It's interesting to note that the Western Cape alone has more plant species than the entire Northern Hemisphere. So considering most of these plants surround our vines, you can just imagine what an impact these plants have on the flavor profile of South African wines. And the third aspect is the incredible range of mountains and slopes you'll find in the Western Cape, which play an equally big role in the success of the Western Cape's grapes. So the different slopes and the different mountain sides give the winemakers the opportunity to decide on which angle they want to plant their vines. And this is important because winemakers get to choose how much sunlight their vines get. So in certain circumstances, they'll shelter their vines from too much sunlight. And in other cases, winemakers will plant their vines much higher up on a specific mountain, which creates cooler conditions, allowing for more balanced acidity. So now that we've looked at the country as a whole, we can go into the details regarding the regions and the grapes of South Africa. So just like France has the AOC system, South Africa has something similar, but just not as strict. So for instance, if a bottle of wine says uh, wine of origin Stellenbosch, all the grapes used in that bottle must come from Stellenbosch. But unlike the French system, these rules don't govern how much grapes we can press or even what types of grapes we can grow in each area. So looking at the regions and the sub-regions on South Africa, they are mainly divided into districts and wards, which are basically regions and sub-regions. 
and in many cases these subregions are divided into more subregions but this is quite important when you look at the diversity of south african growing conditions and the amount of microclimates we have and how just growing a vine on one angle of a mountain compared to a different angle can give you vastly different wines having all these regions and subregions is crucial since each area can give you a completely different style of wine and this diversity of growing conditions also allow pretty much anything to be grown here the red wines can be robust or light and easy drinking and in the same breath we can grow some really light and refreshing white wines but if you look at the percentage of each 45 percent of the wines in south africa are red grapes and they're mainly cabernet merlot and syrah can you see the french influence Although it's not a leader in terms of quantity in South Africa, Pinotage is another important red grape we grow. Pinotage was a grape that was created by crossing Pinot Noir and Cinso, which was once known as Hermitage, hence Pinotage. And it's the only grape variety that we made ourselves in South Africa. And I think there's this huge misconception about Pinotage, especially international countries, who try Pinotage and think it's just associated with a certain flavor. And this is because once upon a time, South African winemakers focused a lot on making heavily oaked Pinotage that had dominant flavors of coffee and chocolate and mocha. And so while at the time it was very unique and it was really interesting to try, this flavor quickly became overwhelming. And although South African winemakers have moved away from making this style of wine, many people associate Pinotage tasting like this all the time. But this cannot be further from the truth since Pinotage is actually a very fresh, vibrant red wine that doesn't always have these dominant chocolate flavors. When it comes to white wine, Chenin is the most grown grape variety in South Africa. And apart from using it just for wine, it's also used to make brandy. But when they do use it for wine, they've made just about everything from sparkling wines to dessert wines to dry styles to oaked styles and unoaked styles. Chenin Blanc is such an incredible, versatile variety and it's no wonder they're growing so much of it. Sauvignon Blanc comes in second in terms of quantity and it definitely has become a South African staple wine. Chardonnay is becoming increasingly popular as well, especially since winemakers have started making a leaner, fresher version of it as opposed to this heavily oaked buttery style. And although these red and white grapes are the most seen in our vineyards, South Africa actually grows over a hundred different grape varieties and the influences range from Germany to Spain to Portugal, each having their own South African twist to it. Other than all the dry red and white wine South Africa makes, they also make an incredible sparkling wine known as MCC. MCC is basically exactly the same as French Champagne, except we can't call it champagne. But if you want to understand the whole situation about champagne in MCC, take a look at my video where I compare all the sparkling wines of the world. So basically MCC is a really high quality sparkling wine, exactly the same as champagne. And we use a lot of the same grape varieties that champagne do like Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, but more and more producers are pushing the boundaries and using a lot more different grapes to make MCC, including things like Chenin and Cinso. And speaking of diverse range of wines, South African dessert wines are also worth taking note of. Our producers make everything from fortified wines to straw wines to late harvest wines and even noble late. The only thing we basically can't do is ice wine. I'll definitely be making a follow-up video where I dive deep into each specific wine region in South Africa since there's such detail worth going into.